Hey everybody, how's it going? I just felt like recording a vlog today. So, Happy New Year to everybody. I hope you guys have had a nice, healthy, and happy New Year. I sure hope that 2021 has a lot better things in store for us than 2020 did. Of course, we're not off to a great start, but anyways, I hope you'll pardon any background noise. Um, my studio is directly below the kitchen in this house, and uh, uh, the dishwasher was running, I I think it's done now. My wife is upstairs zooming with her friends. This room was kind of turned into just a little noise factory. I have been running an air purifier in here for a while. I just shut it off so I could record here. But even on low, that thing makes some noise. It's been exceptionally dry this winter uh, in the Denver area. And in this basement, this is the driest I've ever seen it. I caught the, the humidity in the studio here down around 14%. And that's when I was like, all right, I got to get a humidifier. So I bought a humidifier. That thing makes noise. Again, I shut it off to start recording here. But man, 14% humidity in a room where I have uh, guitars. Uh, you know, if you've got instruments or anything, I think one of the best things you can get for yourself or your studio is probably one of these cheap little hygrometers from uh, Amazon. I think I paid like 20 bucks for this little thing. What am I at right now? 26%, 27%. So that's better than 14, but that's still pretty dry. But uh, if, if you have any concerns at all over the health of your wooden instruments, whatever instruments they may be, I think this is a great uh, investment to make in the kind of health and safety of your studio to make sure everything's going to survive all right. Well, I hope everybody had a Merry Christmas. Uh, we, <laughs> my wife and I have been, you know, just, probably just like a lot of you, have been cooped up in the house together for months and months now. I've been working from home. And I think that over time, just our kind of stir-crazy cabin fever boredness, uh, as soon as November and December rolled around, there wasn't a whole lot to do. So we both kind of went overboard and just kind of <laughs> did way too much online shopping for each other for Christmas. And, you know, it, it's, it's really sweet. And, you know, of course, I appreciate it. But boy, uh, we, kind of, we kind of got carried away this year. I invested in a couple things for the studio here. I uh, thought you guys might be interested in a couple of these things here. Uh, you know, first I bought myself, you know, it's one of those things, uh, you know, buy it, hand it to my wife and say, here, wrap this. You got, you got me a pair of Sennheiser HD 650s for Christmas. And uh, so far, these things have been great. I'm still kind of getting used to them. I'm, I, I've been really frustrated with how things sound in this room lately. I'm, on a con I'm in the basement, so I'm on the foundation of the house. I'm on a concrete floor. I've got concrete walls on two of the four walls here. And while that's great for soundproofing, concrete is uh, difficult for low frequency, uh, you know, acoustics and everything. Low frequency sound hits a thick, dense slab of concrete and it doesn't pass through it at all, really. It just bounces right back off of it. But the, the bass in here is just out of control and I've been having a, a lot of trouble doing any mixing or anything. So I figured a good, reliable, high quality pair of headphones was good. All of my headphones that I have, I just use for tracking. I don't really mix in headphones at all. But I figured a good high quality pair would be good for referencing Bellow Wind. So when I, at my wits end and I can't decide whether the bass guitar is too loud or not loud enough, or the kick drum's too loud or not loud enough, I can pop on these headphones which are open back. This is my first pair of open back headphones. And yeah, they take a little getting used to. All of my other headphones are closed back. I, yeah, I just use them for tracking. I just use them to not pick up what I, you know, the, the backing tracks and the microphone whenever I'm recording. So hopefully that'll start to pay dividends over uh, the coming days, weeks, months, years. I think one of the coolest kind of new additions, one moment, my wife surprised me with this. I have been thinking about getting a banjo for, I don't know, I don't know how many years. And every time I do, I kind of chicken out. They get pretty pricey pretty quickly. And this one, if I get the tuner off of it there, oh man, I don't think the camera's going to focus on it. It's locked on my face. But if you uh, could see it, uh, it's a Deering. And Deering are like, they're a really good brand of banjo. So this is a five string bluegrass style. Uh, what is the series called? I think it's a, it's a Deering Good Time Americana. It's an open back. And uh, man, I just, I love this thing. And uh, so I've been, you know, very slowly kind of learning how to, how to play. It's only been a couple of weeks, so I hadn't made it very far yet. To a guitarist, there are a couple of things about a banjo that are very kind of uh, disorienting. And I think that the main thing for me has been having five strings. <laughs> down here to strum, but only 
four strings up here to fret. And that has caused a lot of uh, mental gymnastics to try to remember. And I, I only know like two chords. I think that's a C, I think. But I can tell it's definitely going to take take just a, just spending time with it. And, um, you know, I, I, I've been on vacation for a few weeks. This is my first week back to work after a few weeks off for vacation. And so this week I haven't really had much time or energy to pick this thing up and just spend time with it. I think the other kind of disorienting thing to a guitarist are, are these, which are the thumb and finger picks, which I, I learned on day one. They, they, they go on like this to where the little claw is underneath. Like, you know, I think most guitarists, especially anybody that's, you know, taken any classical or flamenco or anything lessons where, you know, you're kind of taught to use your, your fingernails to some extent. Like that's kind of the natural thing. Like it, like it's an extension of your fingernail, but oh, apparently not. No, geez, <laughs> it goes to show what I know. But you know, th these have just definitely proven to be um, a, a little odd for a guitarist. You know, somebody that's played guitar for a long time. This, this is, this is tough to get used to, but I think it's just all a matter of spending some time. Here's the extent of what I know how to do on a banjo so far. There. <laughs> so I, I'm really excited to, to use, to get to know this thing and to, to use it to add some cool textures and acoustic textures into songs and arrangements and everything. Nothing sounds like a banjo, that's for sure. And being a big fan of, you know, guys that have used banjos in kind of unconventional ways, like Sifian Stevens and Tom Waits, I, I'm really excited to kind of see what kind of fun, weird things I can come up to do with it. And also, I kind of want to just learn how to play it traditional kind of bluegrass style. I wouldn't mind learning a couple of songs in that kind of style. It's not something I listen to very much. It's certainly not anything I record ever. But man, that's got to be just the happiest music on earth, isn't it? <laughs> All right, what else? Oh, I do have one other fun toy here. Like I said, we just, we got carried away. We really showered each other with gifts. Um, she also got together with a uh, Sweetwater rep and uh, I had expressed an interest in this little reed instrument. It was just kind of like a, somewhere between a recorder and a saxophone made by Yamaha. I just thought it'd be kind of cool um, just to have something, a, a simple little reed instrument. And uh, she got to talking to the Sweetwater guy and he's like, oh no, no, what you, what you want to get him is this thing. This is a Roland Aerophone. This is the, like the entry level model. This is a, what is it? The AE-01, I think. Yeah, I don't see the model number on here, but the, the finger is just like a simplified woodwind um, kind of MIDI controller, like electronic instrument here. And the, the fingering is kind of similar to like a recorder more so than like a saxophone or a uh, clarinet or something. But it's breath controlled. It has MIDI output. It's got a built-in speaker, external speaker output. It's got a few built-in instrument sounds just to kind of get me going right off the bat here. And man, this thing has proven to be a ton of fun. Uh, I tried to start playing the saxophone, I don't know, maybe four or five years ago, and I, I didn't really stick with it. My wife had essentially like rented me <laughs> a, a, a nice Yamaha student model saxophone. And over the course of about a year, as the months went on, I kind of played it less and less and less, and I started feeling bad that we were still paying for it, so we, we, we sent it back. But I think this little thing is just going to be, again, just cool textures, fun, interesting elements to add to arrangements and mixes and everything. I'm really looking forward to that. I've been, I've been playing with it quite a bit. I really like that thing. As one uh, kind of big uh, hurrah gift to myself, uh, right after Christmas, I, I did make kind of a sizable investment in an upgrade for uh, my studio. I, I won't go into it right now. Uh, you can kind of see, you know, there's some boxes kind of peeking up over my speaker over here. It's all blurred because of the background, but I'll be doing some uh, interesting uh, videos about that stuff once it all comes in and I can plug it all in. So yeah, th I, this is just the result of sitting around for months at a time, not having any, you know, we didn't really spend money on anything. And by the time Christmas time rolled around, I, I, we were feeling okay. And since, yeah, we've just been sitting around paranoid to spend any money. And I, I think it was just kind of pent up demand or something, you know, we kind of went a little hog wild here. I had sat, you know, on that same kind of note about, you know, kind of buying stuff. I had sat and recorded a video actually last night that I didn't end up uh, releasing. 
because I don't think I really have any conclusions or anything to share with you, but it was just kind of on, on the topic of, of you know, wanting gear and buying gear. And um, I, I kind of wanted to make the point about, you know, I, I, I have no qualms about buying stuff you want, you know, for, you know, when it comes to home studio stuff. I mean, heck, look around me. And I, I think kind of the, the point that I was trying to get at, but didn't make very eloquently, was mainly not to buy stuff with any sort of expectation that you're, you know, one piece of gear away from having your projects sound amazing or your songs or your mixes. You know, everything we can buy out there is, they're all tools and they can all add and they can all make our lives easier. They can do cool things. They can be fun. They can be rewarding. But on a, on a YouTube channel to where, you know, my, my most popular videos are all me demonstrating how audio interfaces work, I, I try not to, uh, you know, add too much of, you know, hey, you should buy this. Oh, hey, you should go get one of these. You know, I, I don't really want the tone of my channel to be like, like I'm selling stuff or anything. I just want to kind of show people how easy it can be, you know, for those that are intimidated by the process of, buying an audio interface and plugging stuff into it and, you know, getting drivers and software and a DAW and tracks created and assigning inputs. And, you know, these things I, I know to a lot of people uh, just don't come naturally. And it can be like a very big barrier towards somebody that's got an idea in their head and all they want is a, is an MP3. They can show their, their, you know, parents or their friends or whatever. And I think it's, it's really easy to kind of start sliding on that slippery slope of, you know, of trying to, to buy stuff to make you better. And so, yeah, I think I had, you know, 10 minutes of going on and on and on trying to kind of make that point and uh, it, it just never came off so well. So I kind of canned the whole video and I figured I'd just shoot this one today just to, you know, yeah, talk about gear and, <laughs> and buying stuff anyways. Anyways, since this is just a vlog video, I don't want it to go on too long or anything here. I just wanted to kind of stop in, say hi, hit record and, and, you know, wave at y'all and say hi. <laughs> and um, I've just kind of been, you know, dying to tell somebody about, you know, some cool stuff that I got lately. But in the meantime, between now and the next time I uh, hit record here, let us know down in the comments, uh, how was your holiday season? Did you get some good rest, relaxation? Were you able to recharge at all? I hope the whole health situation around you is is doing well. We're, we're not doing great here in uh, Colorado, especially in the, the counties around us. So I've just kind of turned into a hermit over the over these last several months. Although that's not too far distance from my normal life anyways. Anybody that knows me knows I'm not like, you know, the great outdoorsman or anything. But I sure hope that you are doing well. I hope that you had a great holiday season. I hope that you're entering 2021 with a good outlook. I hope that for all of us, we have great things ahead of us this year. And I hope we all get to make some good music this year. I hope we just all get to sit and take a deep breath and create something great in our own home studios. All right, thank you so much for watching. That'll do it for me this time, and I'll see you guys again next time.